Okay, so we are ready for our fix out in the inside of our tiny house. So a fix out or fit out is us putting architraves around the windows, our skirting on the floor, and any other bits of timber trim that we have to nail on around the house. So we're starting here with some window architrave. I'm gonna show you the system that I use in order to measure, cut, and nail the architraves. There seems to be a lot of different ways guys have come up with in order to do this. There's no right and wrong, just like with a lot of different building methods, there's usually more than one ways to do it. But this is the way that I've learned and I've found it's actually a lot quicker than a lot of the other ways that I've seen people do. And I'll let you know exactly why. So, as you can see here, we've already sheeted all the walls and the windows are in. So, now it is time for architrave. Now let me just go over quickly here what the purpose of this architrave is and how it is installed. Now the architrave is a bit of timber that is going to go around the window and it's going to cover that gap between our wall lining and our window that we've left there. Now as I spoke of earlier we didn't we weren't too concerned about making this gap too tight because we knew this was coming and we wanted to make it a lot easier for us when we're doing the wall lining. So what we do is we actually put a nail through the architrave and into that timber reveal and then we put another nail into the timber frame above it. So these actually hold the window in place, at least they help a lot with the strength. In combination with the screws that we've put in through the reveal into the timber frame, it's going to be super, super, super strong. So, step one would be just double checking that your reveals are straight because once you put these architraves on, you're essentially locking that reveal in place. So, you're not going to be able to straighten it afterwards. So, we've already made our reveals pretty straight when we installed the windows. Some people actually wait to this stage to straighten them. They just put the windows in pretty quickly, not worrying about straightening the reveals. And then when it's architrave time, they go to the effort to go and straighten them. We already straightened them when we installed the windows. So I am double checking they're straight, but 99% of the time, I'm not changing them. So once that's done, it's time to measure. So the way I do this, is like this. So, sorry, let me talk quickly about the quirk because it's very important you understand what the quirk is with the architrave. So when we do nail our bit of architrave into that reveal and into the wall, we leave a gap underneath or a space, I should say, of that reveal left exposed. That's what we're going to call the quirk. Go look at your windows at home, wherever you are, and you'll see that the architrave that's nailed around it, it leaves a little quirk there on that reveal before the architrave starts. You can go actually all different amounts for that quirk, and we'll choose an amount, and I'll let you know why. But generally speaking, all the windows I've seen, there's been a quirk there. So we need to understand that before we can measure our arcs. Now, in order to measure these architraves exactly, we also need to decide upon the quirk we want to use. We can make it any quirk, really, and we just have to decide upon it. So the quirk we're going to be using here will probably be about four and a half mil. It's not that mark exactly, but it's going to look something like that. So now that we know that we're going to allow about a four and a half mil gap on each side, we can measure the arc. Now the reason I like to allow uh, at least four and a half mil is so that if when we go to nail the arcs on, we're one or two mil either way out, it's not going to be totally noticeable straight away. If you use a really small quirk, like I've seen some people do, two to three mil, if you're two or even one mil out in the wrong direction, you're straight away going to notice because that quirk's already shut. So it doesn't allow room for error at all when you're doing it the other way. So four or five mil, I recommend at least for your quirk. 
So now that we know that, in order to measure, what I do is I'll just measure the internal measurement of the window from top to bottom of them reveals. In that circumstance, I have 1201. So I'm actually going to write 1201 here. So I want to show you the math. And for the top, up and down, we've got 451. Got about 451 both sides. Now, it should be the same on each side of the window, but what you have to be careful of is that when you screw this reveal in place, you didn't screw it too hard without a packer behind it and it broke away from this top bit of timber. So in other words, the reveal is then uh, out of square with that frame pulled in too far. You'll see that your, the, the, the side outside edge of your reveal isn't flush. If that's the case, you might need to pull that reveal back and correct it. Otherwise, you're going to end up with two different measurements top to bottom or up and down, and that's going to make your miters not square. So you want your two measurements to be the same, whatever you end up cutting. So we're good here because we've done a correct job. So I've got 1201 and 451. Now, that's the internal measurement from here. We want to add our quirks on. So that'll be four and a half, four and a half. That's going to be an extra nine mil that we're going to add. And then when you go to cut this architrave, it's so much easier if you can hook on to the long point and then just pull your tape along and put a measurement. If we're trying to measure from the short point, it's, it's a pain in the ass. So and you've got to remember this measurement here is actually the short point. I'm measuring in just the quirk. That short point is what lands on your four and a half mil of the quirk. So what we then do is we add the width of our architrave to the measurement. So we're using 42 mil wide architrave. When you put a 45 degree cut on it, that actually adds the width of it to the length. So 42 mil. Then because I'm measuring on that slight angle, I like to just add an extra one millimeter. And I like a round, nice round number, 10 mil. So four and a half mil quirk, four and a half mil quirk. And then I added one mil, that's 10. Plus the 42 is 52 millimeters. So it might sound a little bit confusing, but once you get it in your head, it's super easy. Any internal measurement that I do, I just add 52 millimeters to. Then I measure from the long point, I pull along, put a mark at the short point, then I cut it, that's it. So that's how we've measured them. So I had 1201, I add 52, 1253, and my height was 451, that'll now be 503. Okay, that's cut. Let's go down to the saw bench and get them all the architraves cut. Okay, so now that we've measured our window arcs, it's time to cut them. So as we're doing finished carpentry here, one of the first things I like to do is actually get my set square out and I'll just put it on the base of my saw and run my blade down it. And I'll just make sure that it's perfect with that square and it doesn't need any adjusting side to side. As we're not in a, a factory with these fixed saws, we move these around, they're portable. Sometimes they get bumped and you might have to adjust to get it dead square and it might not be correct when it's saying it is on the uh, gauge. So I know that's square, we're good there. So first things first, I'll just cut a miter on one end of the bit of timber and then I can measure from there. So here we go. Again, making sure our timber is right up against that back rail here as we want perfection here as much as possible. This is finished carpentry now, so we've sharpened our pencils and we've got a little bit of a different mindset here. And of course, most drop saws have a fixed point at 45 degrees where it locks in place, so you don't have to try too hard to figure out that. They can even come bad eventually over time, but here we have a pretty new saw, so that's not gonna be an issue. So I've cut 
one of my 45 degree angles. Now I can get my measurement, 1253 it is. Now, as I was saying, we are measuring with this system from long point to short point. Now we went to all that trouble of adding the quirk when we're doing the measurements and adding the width of the timber when we're doing the measurements to make what we're doing right now a lot easier, which is measuring it. To try and measure from the short point is such a pain. So to be able to just hook over that long point, measure down here to that short point, 12.53, easy peasy. Then we slide that along and we'll have to bring our 45 degree angle around to the opposite direction and I can make a cut. Now I like to put my hand here on the saw and you can just make micro adjustments quite easy going back and forth. So you can come down, you, you get it so it looks pretty good, then you can just put a little nip in the, in the architrave and see if it's going to hit your pencil line or not. And then you can slowly drag your way until you're perfect. You're much better starting a little bit away longer and then dragging it closer so you don't obviously wreck the architrave. That's one architrave cut. So, I like to then obviously cut them in pairs and then once I've cut the two pairs, I then put them side by side and I make sure they're exactly the same. So I'm gonna do that right now. Another thing I should mention is when you're cutting your miters that you're always cutting with the face you wanna see facing up because the underside of your timber when you cut it can just get some splinters on it and it's not a good look for the finished face. So as you can see, it's probably going to be hard to see here, that's quite, that's very smooth and perfect, that was the f face facing up. On the underside, not that it's dirty here, it's got nothing to do with it. I do want that to be back for that reason, but it is going to be painted. You can see some little kind of chips, the saw kind of chips away at it a little bit. So it's, that's why when we cut one arc to the other side, we don't roll the arc over and then use the same angle of the saw. We have to use the same face facing up and bring it all the way around and then cut the other side. So now that I've cut the two pairs, I bring them together, get that nice and flush. Oh, perfection. So they're good now. That's one set for the top of the window. I'll simply then just repeat the process for the other sides of the window. That window is cut and I'll see you up there and we'll nail them off. Okay, so we've got our architraves cut and it's now time to nail them in place. So what you will need for this is some PVA glue to glue the miters and also glue the actual architrave in place. I recommend getting a clear glue for that. And also our C Brad finish nailer. So you can use various different gauge nailers. This is a C Brad, which is I think a 16 gauge. Nails look like this. I'm actually using 45 mil nails, probably could use 38 or so. You don't want too long with your architraves either because sometimes the nail can come out through the reveal so you just want to be a bit careful there. Okay, and we're in business, so let's, let's begin. So, I like to put on my side architraves. Now, let's remember we've cut all four of these architraves. So, this is what I was saying before how this method can be quicker. We can literally cut all the architraves in the whole house before we have to nail anything on. A lot of other systems aren't like that. Now, I'm going to show you the system here now and what I'm doing is I want to do it in a certain way so I don't have to go back to my drop saw and make any adjustments to these four that I've cut. 
that will take extra time. If I can cut them all in one go and come and nail them all go, that's a big time saver. So, I like to start with the sides. Now, I'll try and make this a little bit beginner friendly too in the sense that I can easily just use my eyeballs and, and gauge the quirk just by looking at it. I can see, oh, that looks right, that looks right, that looks right, and nail it. And that only comes from experience. But I imagine this might be the first window that you're going to architrave. So you might want to get another bit of timber. This is actually my other architrave, but you can cut another little bit with two angles on it, 245s, and you can use it as a, a, a gauge. So you can put it up there and then you get a good idea of how big your quirk is going up and down. And you can put it on the bottom and you can get a bit of an idea and go, oh, that needs to come up a bit, that needs to come down a bit. Now, I'm already pretty good just because I, like I said, I can gauge it with my eyes. And then once you see how big that quirk is, top and bottom, you found the average, you'll also put that distance on this quirk the vertical one, so you can, you can sl shot, slide this back and forth. So once I've got that where I want it, I'm gonna put one nail, seabed nail, right through the edge of that architrave and into that reveal. Now I'm just gonna put one at the top and one at the bottom for now, because I might have to still move it a bit. So I'll now do that to the other side. Now, we can see how our top one might look. Now as you can see there, it's not exactly perfect, but it's pretty darn close. You can see by looking here, it, the top's actually a little bit long. In other words, these side ones that I've put in, one of them needs to go out a little bit. So I'll look at them too, and I'd say this one's probably a little bit smaller. So you can then get your chisel, put it on the side of the architrave where the nail is, and just give it a little tap. You don't want to use your hammer because you can dent the soft architrave. And that's why we've only put one nail up in each corner, so we can still adjust them back and forth quite easily. Now I'm pretty happy with that. That's great. That looks good. So now let me try the bottom. Let's get the bottom looking the goods so straight off the bat we're looking same same we haven't quite now allowed enough on them bottoms so i need to come out a little bit now i reckon they're pretty even i might go a little tap there and a little tap over here and see how that looks Pretty good. I reckon just a wincy little whisk them all here. Yep. I'm not sure if that moved. Yep, that's good. That's the right length now. So now I can put some glue. This glue's getting bogged up. Put a bit of glue on the back of that one. And this, this just helps them stop them from moving and our mitres cracking in the future. I just gotta keep unblocking this glue at the moment. Now, what you also wanna do is put glue on the mitre. That's that face that you've cut there. And I like to give it a little smear with my hand. I do that on both sides. It's very important to glue your mitres. Again, this is to help them spreading apart once it's painted and putting a crack on your mitre. I 
I'll then push that up into place, get it looking about right, and I can put a nail at the top. And I'll just put, I'll still just put a nail on each end for the moment. Just give myself one more opportunity to make any adjustments. Same with the top. Oh, this glue's really not making my video as crisp as it could be. As long as we get the glue on there. Smear that glue a bit with your finger. Get your fingers in there, they're gonna get dirty. Now I'll put a nail up in the corner. Same again here. Now we've still only got one nail in each corner. So we can have a bit of a look and you can still quite easily make any adjustments that you need. I could get my chisel and tap that up and down and make any little adjustments that I think I need. I actually think I could hit that one out just a whisker and hit that one up just a whisker. I think that would have made it a little bit better. Everywhere else is looking pretty good. So now, you just want to copy that quirk size all the way along your reveal. So you can just bend these up and down. And I'll go along about every 300 or so. Put a nail, and then put a nail below it now. We're nailing into the frame as well as into the reveal. And that original nail that you put in, and put another one there. Now, it's the little bit of an art that might take getting used to is just nailing on the edge of that timber and into the reveal and not going too far down or too far up. That's something you just got to gauge with your gun, something you might need to get used to. That might need a little tap in, we can put another one there. Okay, another one up there. As you can see, that nail's gone bad. I might have hit, what can happen is you might hit another nail that was below it, or maybe there was some kind of metal below it. So I'm using, I actually don't have my pinches with me. My nails, my hammer's not gonna get it out. Give me a look here. Oh yeah, I'll have to get my pinches. So I'll get them out shortly. If you're hitting a bit of metal or something behind your architrave, your nail, obviously these seed brads aren't strong enough to penetrate it, so they'll curl up and you'll usually see that head come out like that. No big deal. You just have to pull it out if you can, or if worse comes to worse and you can't pull it out, you have to punch it in because that's all going to get bogged and filled anyway. It's not a big deal. Okay, so we've got them nailed off. Now, how are they all looking for smooth? That one's really good. That one's pretty good. There's one over here that I think, these two here are a little bit of an issue. So what I'm gonna do to make even them up, because they're not quite even along the whole thing. And that can sometimes be because your window frame, your window reveal was maybe a little too far forward or a little bit too far back, just a couple of mil with the wall lining, it's not quite flush. So your architrave either gets pushed forward or gets pushed back a bit, and that can make the face not dead smooth. So what you then have to do is you can just cut some little wedges, little timber wedges on your drop saw out of some architrave material. And you can wedge behind the architrave and try and bring it so it's 
smooth. Even if you can't get it dead perfect now, it's still not the end of the world because we're going to sand our miters. But we're trying to install them so we need minimal sanding. So now that I've got the miters, so I'm pretty happy with them. They're glued and they're pretty smooth. I'm going to get out my miter pins. Now, you can use all kinds of small little nails. You can even use the C-Brad nails and I like to take them out of the gun and separate them. There's one there. So it's like a small little nail that actually comes in the strips. Or you can buy some little small nails and you'll nail them through the miter. You can sometimes use the actual gun just to nail it, especially when you're using thicker architrave like this, which is 18mm thick. But that can sometimes go pear-shaped, so it's a lot safer if you want to hand nail them. So I'll then hand nail that through one of the sides of that architrave, right in the corner. And that'll help keep this mitre together. So I'll go around and I'll do that to every mitre and that will lock it in place. Once we've done that and it's all finished, the painter what might be you, whoever's making your house, or it might be an actual painter would normally fill them holes. But as the carpenter, I like to sand our miters, and most carpenters are the same. It's our responsibility to make these miters nice and smooth. Okay, so as I was saying, we got to sand the miters. So I didn't have a sander on this video, so I've just come and gone and grabbed it. I'm gonna show you exactly what I do here. Now, typically I would put on all the architraves and then at the end I would come back and sand all the miters. Although in some circumstances you might want to sand them as you go. It's totally up to you. So, one way you can go about it is you can go buy some spack filler and fill it in and sand it. But what I like to do is just get a bit of the same glue that you're using, put it on your finger, rub it into the miter and get all that glue to fall down that little crack if you've got a little crack there. If you're super good and you don't have a crack, no need. Then I'll get like a 120 grit sandpaper. You can use a, a palm sander like this or sometimes you can use the other little triangle shaped miter ones that don't spin. Either or works fine. Then I'll sand that miter. As you can see, because I put glue, well, because I put glue in that crack, it, all the all the dust of the sanding has actually fallen in there and filled it in. So it actually looks really good now, and it's dead smooth from side to side. It's really important that you sand them and get them flush because even if you don't notice it as much now, once you paint it. I find it really sticks out any difference you have in the two heights of them. So definitely, even if it doesn't look like it needs too much, just throw your sander over them two flat surfaces and just give it a little bit of a hit just to make sure it's absolutely perfect, ready for paint. Mm -hmm.